This time on American Viscountess, I'm visiting the beautiful Elmore Court in Gloucestershire. And there is an exciting new project happening here, which is all about getting closer to nature. Hello everybody and lovely to see you again. Thank you so much for joining me here in the drawing room at Mapperton for another fascinating historic house visit. Elmore Court is a glorious 16th century historic house on the edge of the Cotswolds, but this site has been home to the Guise family since the 13th century. Anselm Guise has a very bold vision for Elmore's future and is opening the house and estate to visitors in a completely inspiring way. Elmore is literally going back to its roots, or dare I say, going wild. Very, very nice well. Nice to see, see you. Too. Nice to see you. Wow. Beautiful day. Thank you for making sure that the weather was... We try. Okay. Brilliant. But is there yeah. a big party going on here? Well, we do, we do weddings. So um, we've got a wedding tomorrow and they're arriving later today. So uh, yeah, it's quite it's set up quite a big one. Okay, but and it's not Saturday. No, so we do. We do weddings Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and most Sundays. And You're kidding Bank holiday me. Mondays. Yeah. Okay, so, so I'm trying to do the maths here, Anselm. So that is... So there's a lot. Look, how many a year is that? We do like 160. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. 160 weddings a we year. We do. So every, every weekend we're, we're flat out. So oh it's... my gosh. But that is incredible. Yeah. It's going really well. Yeah. And, and people love it. I mean, it's, this house was built for partying. So. Yeah, so this is sort of the, where they get married. They walk down here. Yeah, so, right. so, I mean, where we've just come in, they, generally speaking, the wedding will happen here, the ceremony will happen here, and then people will move out into the kind of reception rooms, the drawing room, out into the lawns, and right. then we've got a purpose-built bunker made out of mud that's completely soundproof at the back of the house where the party, the, the dinner and dancing happens. Oh so that's gosh. kind of like our marquee and it's completely sustainably right. built and it's And people typical. stay in the house. And we've got, yeah, so we've got 16 bedrooms. So uh, and then we've got another, we've got a coach house. Okay, I've just spotted some heraldry coat of arms. I'm yeah. slightly obsessed. I have probably a weird obsession with these, but I, <laughs> I did when I was walking up, I was looking to see if I see the three Montague lozenges, I always look for that to see if we're related. We're not related. <laughs> yeah, sadly. I mean, they, yeah. We're not related. Um, Darn it. I mean, they, they, you know, these things do happen actually, weirdly. But yeah. um, the, seeing as people get married here, it's quite nice because those are all families that we've married, um, the guys that have married um, over time. So, yeah. you know. It's... So, Anselm, tell me how long your family has been here. We got given the land in 1262 by Henry III. Oh, my so, goodness. Yeah. So I'm just going to do a little bit of maths here. So that's 800. It's kind of, so it's, yeah, it's getting there. Getting there. It's to getting there. I mean, the house years. isn't the house. The oldest part of the house is actually where we are now, which dates back to about 1580. But the cellars date back to then. Incredible. So there's a hole in the ground, but obviously in those days you you didn't <clears throat> unless you were building a castle or you were the church. Nothing got built out of stone. Really. Right. Right. So, um, but we I've got the actual um, seal that we were given by Henry III. <gasps> Um, no. We had to pay one clove of gilly flower to the crown, uh, which is wow. over here on the wall. This is it? This is it, yeah. What? Yeah. That it's is... the original grant of the Manor of Elmore by John, the son of Hubert de Burgh, Earl of Kent, and Grand Justiciary of England in the reign of Henry, Henry III. Yeah. And some de guides, moi. Right. Yeah, so I'm really old. You are. <laughs> You're, that's right. You are really... <laughs> Old. So yeah. Anselm then is obviously a family name. It's a family yeah. name. Yeah. So yeah. There's lots of Anselms. The, right. Down. And, yeah. And so we yeah, so we've got this yeah, we've got this amazing family tree that goes back all the way. So Where are we now then in the house? So this is this is the drawing room. Um Beautiful. and um and we, you know, and actually this is great so when we have events, this is where people come back after the gilly flower, which is we named after the rent that we paid, which is the event space. Um, they come back in here and this is kind of, so there's quite a lot of fun. It yeah. happens, happens here, it's like it's two in the morning. Beautiful. And we've got a bar at the end. Can I go uh, check out that bar? Yeah, you should crack oh it open. Oh my goodness. And also just, is all this original? 
Yeah, I this mean, is all original. Yeah, we've. Come, I mean, obviously this oh, this isn't original. Yeah, yeah. We, we, I mean, it would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah. So beautiful we've, we've, carvings all around. Yeah. Just absolutely yeah, fantastic. Beautiful. Okay, so just really quickly, so I can get my head around. So I know land was granted by Henry the Third, and then who built the house? Which one of your ancestors? Well, it's 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 not an easy okay one to answer that because it was done. It's because architecturally, it's, it's it's quite unusual because there's lots of bits that were kind of added and subtracted. Right. So, I, there's not one person really. Yeah. Um, personally, did the most is actually my was, was in the 18th century, which, is, which we know about, which is William Vernon Gardens, my great great grandfather. Okay. And of course, I've built loads too. Right. You know. Cool. You <laughs> built this bar. I built this bar, bar. <laughs> reportedly, and then the gilly flower and, and all the rest right, of it. Right. Right. So, okay. So, uh, yeah. yeah. And you're building tree houses. And we're building tree houses. Yeah. So fantastic. So yeah. I'd love to go. Chat well, to you about I, that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's that's kind of. I mean, funny enough, I I was trying. I'm really into sustainability and trying to do something different with the environment. So, um, when I first inherited, I couldn't. The, all the land was in tenant farm with in tenancy. Yes, so I, yes. I couldn't do anything with that, and I needed to make some money because there's loads of inheritance tax and the house is falling down. So the only thing I could really sweat, if you like, was this house. Um, but since then, that was 10 years ago, um, land has come back in hand right. and I'm doing a rewilding project and we're doing a load of regenerative agriculture, yeah. which is kind of different to this. And I wanted to have an interface where our guests, the hospitality side could kind of interface with the natural side of what we're doing. So we've built a load of tree houses, which are just finished now, mm. which is really exciting. So I can go see them? We can go and see them, yeah. Let's go and see them. Okay, brilliant, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. Hi everybody, I first wanna say thank you so much for watching our channel, American Viscountess, and in particular, these historic house episodes. When we started this journey two years ago, we had this idea, right, what can we do with a very lean team in order to bring these important historic houses, their history, the architecture, and of course, the living history, the owners as well, to screens, to you guys here on YouTube, and it's only because of the support of our patrons at patreon.com forward slash American Viscountess that we have been able to expand the historic houses that we're visiting across the country. In 2021, we were able to visit three historic houses. In 2022, we were able to up that to five historic houses. And this year, because of our patrons and their support, we will be visiting over 12 historic houses across the UK and Scotland is included in that as well. And it really is because of our patrons that we've been able to make this dream a reality and bring such high quality productions with such a lean team to you all. So do consider becoming a patron and help us to continue to celebrate the importance of preserving this part of Britain's history by checking out the description down below, patreon.com forward slash American Viscountess. It really is only because of our patrons that you're able to see these high quality productions celebrating historic houses. Anselm has built six tree houses for guests to stay and experience being in nature. And when I visited, the finishing touches were being made before the big opening day. Now I'm hearing some noise in the background. So is that the tree house noise? Yeah, so we're, yeah, so we're very, very, very close to finishing. It's all a bit stressful right now because this weekend we've got our first reviewers coming so no. so it's kind of got to be yeah, ready yes, yes. for Saturday. Literally five days ago this was a, felt like a building site yeah, and now it's did. suddenly like oh proper road. I mean you know the grass is growing really quickly thank god. Fantastic. <laughs> beginning to look so when this. people arrive are they they're parking their cars? Yeah here. so so each treehouse has got its own boardwalk. So this is this is wow. um, the boardwalk to what we've called Sky, and this is accessible. So it's it's wheelchair accessible, and you've got space for two car cars. Right. And we've got electric car charging points for every single what? one. Yeah. So oh my gosh! All, I can come here. Bring can, my electric can, car. My you EV. You damn well can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then uh, and then so this is this one's called Kite. Um, okay. And we've got two parking. Space for this. And, Amazing. Uh, Dave, 
he's doing the... Do, this is incredible. Wow. And then we have, they, you have your own walkway. You have I mean, these, these have been like so stressful getting right because it's actually really hard yeah. to do this without causing any harm to the right. woodlands and without right. putting any holes in the ground. So they're all, um, they're like concrete little feet. Oh yes, are, yes, I can see. Yeah, difficult, um, yes. <gasps> but, but lovely. Um, it's really cool um, and we've got this amazing lighting so in the night it sort of it no. glows and it's, yeah. I feel like I'm literally walking into Costa Rica here. Everybody. That's, that's the intention. Okay, great. So, so I nailed it, didn't I? <laughs> you did, yes. It is, it's, you know. I, no, but I really do. Like, this is incredible. Yeah. I'm actually astounded right now. Really, I am. I, I, I honestly do not feel that I'm in England. Yeah. These trees are what, though? These are laurels. Okay. So laurel. these are yeah. kind of not really indigenous, but actually they're quite evocative. And they are. They're, you know, I love them, and they're lovely, and they're they, lovely. and the other things are evergreen, so it's going to be like this all year round. Ah, oh. so um, so here we are. Oh my goodness, and here Anton, we are. this is incredible. So we've got the housekeeping team are in here at the moment. Okay, okay, I don't really have any words right now. You know, as we know, like glamping has been like super big in yeah. England. Lots of people glamping, but I've never come across these tree houses before. So. This is, I mean, I'm absolutely astonished in what I'm seeing, but what made you decide to do tree houses in the first place? Um, I, I just <sighs> love tree houses. I mean, you know, it's like, I'd spent so much time in my childhood, like, clambering around in trees. You know? Right. So it was just like, it's just one of those things. And I've always been somebody who's bought kind of tree house books, like Cabin Paul or whatever right. it is. And sort of that kind of cabiny thing. And, yes. and, and also I've got a, you know, I love festivals and I love glamping, but right. I kind of, that's been, I feel a bit done. Done, yes, um, I agree. And when I was thinking, right, I need to have, I want to have somewhere that people can stay and they can look out of the, over the land. It was just a complete no brainer. This view is, first of all, is sensational. Glamping, you're, you are kind of, you're zipped in. Yeah. You're in there, you're zipped in. Yeah. There's not really windows. No, no, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, no, so this, Here, this, this is a house. <laughs> this is a house. In a, up in the trees. I mean, yes. it's not really, I mean, really strictly speaking, we haven't built it around a tree. It's a, it's, it's a building on, on stilts. You know? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I mean, the, you know, and, it's, it's, and the way it's built into the ground is that it's got screw part piles. There's no foundation. So we've caused very little damage to the actual environment it's in so it's very sensitive we built it with really sustainable materials we yes. tried to get everything that we can it's not been possible to do that completely but i kind of wanted it to be that so the kitchen's outside so you have to kind of engage with the elements a right. bit we're kind of forcing people to yes even though there is an oven and little mini kitchenette in the kind of indoor bit okay um so we want people to kind of even in the winter put a jumper on and get the fire going and, right yes you know Look blanket up and yeah you know and get Get, get involved. Yes, yes, yes. And be, and be in nature. And be outside yes. and not cuddled away in right. a fluffy towel. Yeah. Though, there is a fluffy towel. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's and a, a fluffy bed. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and there are some, of course, it's, it's comfortable. It's comfortable. So, you know, it's, it's, it's I, lo I just love, and I love contrast. I love contrast. I love, you know, because these are quite, the way we've designed it, it's quite clean lines, quite Scandinavian. Yes, yes, it is. And Very. it's quite contrast against the kind of, you know, organic explosion of what's happening around it. So. It's beautiful. And then also, I love that the bath is there because you can have sort of this beautiful um, uh, bird song surrounding you yeah. while you're running a hot bath. I exactly. mean, if it were me, it'd be a cold bath. But just listening to the bird song, breathing in yeah. Yeah. the and air. Being, and, being, and being out being, here. And, and with and, this view. And with this bath. view, and we've, you know, we've done a wetland scrape and we're hoping that the abundance of you know, the birds and the bees and all the rest of it will just be more yes. and more of a cacophony over time as what's happening out on the land well yes we, yes well of course and that's part of your rewilding project because exactly. we know that you know with the rewilding project comes this increase in biodiversity which means an increase in yeah. bird song in bees in exactly. the invertebra yeah. and all of that yeah. oh my goodness this is wonderful can i just go back to the beginning here how long has this project taken to get off the ground this tree the tree houses in particular um we I started, when, we st when I kind of decided I'm going to go for it was in 2020. Right. And that was because of the pandemic. 
I've been thinking about it. It was like, I've got to get on with it. It was kind of like an idea. But was, right. So in, and, and that was because the wedding business was so badly hit by the pandemic. I was like, I need more strings to my bow. And also what we're doing with the land, I just want to get on with it because I kind of felt like the pandemic was us meddling with nature and look yes. what happens, you know, blah, blah, blah. So yes. it's been, from actual decision, it's been like three, three, three and three and a yeah. half years or so. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. Listen, Anselm, I'm just going to sort of take this all in. I mean, this is what yeah. you want people to do, right? Yeah, just be quiet, be still. Just be quiet and be still. Yeah. And the view from the tree houses looks out onto a landscape which Anselm is in the process of giving back to nature. The rewilding is down here beyond this woodland. Ah. And the land out that way, and the River Severn's about five, six hundred metres that way. Oh so my goodness, sort of, it wow. Wraps around the estate. And I didn't know it was that close. Fantastic. Yeah, really, really close. Yeah, I mean, just, I mean, this land out here was historically was, had been very heavily drained. Right. Um, to try and make agricultural land. So, what we've done is we've been breaking the land drains and allowing and letting the land hold the water. So this bit, we're kind of returning it back to, um, you know, what it used to be, which was a wetlands. Which are wetlands, exactly. You know, and Elmore is called Elmore, we think, because it's Eelmore, more of eels, because right. back in the day, there would have been, because eels, I didn't realize this until quite recently, they made up more of our diet than all other fish combined in the medieval times. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> so this would have been like a, hive of activity and yes yes of, eels of course and, the rest of it. So, and of course eel the eel story is amazing as well because what we're doing here is by improving eel populations because of the fact they go to the sargasso sea we're impacting on the biodiversity that's happening in the caribbean sea which is so there's this that kind of amazing is incredible this is exciting link between yes. you know doing thing one thing here can have an effect on something and something on else in the world you know how brilliant so it's exciting. It's exciting to kind of you start pulling these levers and you start realizing yes. the impact you're having. Well, and actually... exactly. And I think I think for many people. I mean, I know I was in the same boat before we started our rewilding project um, properly. That people think of rewilding as just sort of letting nature go and that's it. Yeah. And, and I get that. But also, there's the wetlands. I mean, we have done stuff. Look I mean, out here we've done wetland scrapes. Yeah. Um, and we broke all the land drains, like I said, so the, la the water doesn't run away. And then by putting a scrape, it kind of automatically get these ponds. And that's bringing in already loads of bird life. So we're doing that there. And then sort of over this way, which is, is slightly less low lying, the idea is to allow that to become a semi scrubby 20% woodland cover thing right. over a really long period of time. OK, OK. Um, and, uh, and that's kind of over, over that way. And then we've got a herd of longhorn here already. Right, So you, and um, when did you bring in your longhorn? We, they arrived quite recently, so it was September 21. Okay. So a year yeah. and a half ago, and we've had one lot of babies from them. Fantastic. And we're just about, they're calving now as well. Right. So it's yes. around two, it's happened. And then when, when I can afford it, we'll fence it, and we're gonna have, you know, pigs and the yeah. ponies. Are you and, doing Exmoor ponies? Yeah, so we've just, we just got our Exmoor ponies those, wow. yeah, fantastic. That is and then, so exciting. And I think it's really worth explaining this for, you know, everybody who's kind of watching this who doesn't yeah. know so much how these these animals in particular work together. First of all, like to bring back some native species, yeah. if you like. But the cattle are, you know, they're brilliant at grazing and they're yeah. clever grazers. And then you bring in the ponies and they're fantastic at browsing. Yeah. And then you bring in the pigs and they're brilliant at the rootling. Yeah. And they all kind of work together to well, capture think, cards. I mean, the, the, the big one really, I mean, for, I, I really can't wait for the pigs because we've, because this has been kind of grazed land. So it's, it's got a strong grassy sward. And what we want is other plants to kind of start growing out in these fields. But yeah. because if a seed lands on the grass, it just hasn't got a chance. Right. Bring in a pig, it'll just kind of hammer the ground, plough it up essentially, right. reveal the soil, and then other plants can start getting in. So that's way, that way you start getting a diversity away from just grass. Right. And that's what we want, and biodiversity. And the more I look into it, the more I realise that it's, it's diversity that is the healthy thing. It's like having lots of different species 
is the thing that's the magic. And it's the same in your, right. like, your gut or, yes. you know, like in everything. It's variety is... Is key. Is key. And, and, and it's also, it's the variety of the biodiversity, but also it's the abundance of it. So that, that they continue to thrive and you're every year, you, when you're tracking them, you're getting, you know, you can track that you have 100% more moths this yeah, year, 300% yeah, yeah. more butterflies, you know, but even it's the invertebrate and the sort it's of ground nest. It's, it's and it's everything. what's happening in the micro, in the soil. In the soil, and every, yeah. It's just everything. It's yeah. just, it's, and it's kind of magic. It is magic. It happens all it? on its own and you just, and what we need to do, and this is, I think, the biggest thing is to stop interfering. It's so easy to kind of kind of go, this is happening. I wonder if I, oh no, 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 don't. If I tinker this. If I tinker it'll start, but actually the thing is to not. Yeah. You know, and things, and as it finds its feet and it rebalances, some things are going to go completely wild and you'll suddenly go, oh my God, it's turning into a kind of thistle hell. Right. <laughs> uh, but actually, yes. if you let it go, then you'll find plants, uh, animals that will come in that will feed on thistles and they'll rebalance yes. that kind of thing. So yeah. it's that. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's you know, trusting nature and exactly. it's trusting the universe yeah. and it's with you know it's and it's us the, as humans we have this ability to want to control everything and nature we always can't help ourselves right exactly and it's like and it's you know land is not there's a, I, one of the local farmers is talking to me about it and he was like he was just like, couldn't understand that i would not be producing food from the land it's like land is for, for producing food and i was like no it's not no right it's, who gives us this divine right to kind of like Right. You know, sort of abuse, take what we want from it. It's it's for all beating hearts. That's right. You know, and it's, it's we are obviously part of that. Not right. saying we shouldn't right. feed ourselves, but it's not at the exclusion of everything else. And this is it. We're walking on it. It was absolutely fascinating talking to Anselm about his rewilding plans and to see those amazing tree houses. What an incredible place. So thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you back here for another historic house visit. But until then, enjoy getting out into the landscape wherever you are and however you can. Bye everybody.